The New Jersey Devils signed another player to a PTO deal. And what do I think about his chances of making the team over Thomas Hickey? And also, there are a few young players that we should keep an eye out for during this rookie camp. There's a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked On Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to Locked On Devils Podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play play announcer and also Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So before we get into the news, I want to share something inspirational because I believe that everyone needs to hear this story in case you're feeling down or if you feel like all hope is lost. So uh, giving you guys some inspiration on this fine Friday morning. So uh, Eric Legrand was the winner of the New Jersey Devils' Buy Black Contest. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Buy Black Contest, it's basically a, a marketing strategy that the New Jersey Devils use to try to support local black businesses. And a lot of people submit uh, their company, their stories, whatever the case might be. And the New Jersey Devils select which company they're going to rep on the side of their helmet. It's a promotional thing. Uh, there's no money involved, basically free advertising, and it's spotted on the New Jersey Devils' helmet once again for a few games, and the winner of the contest was Eric Legrand. Now, does that name sound familiar? Well, that might ring the bell for some of my more avid college football watchers who uh, listen to this show, because Eric Legrand, a little over a decade ago when he was playing for Rutgers, he unfortunately became paralyzed when he was going in for a tackle, and it was all over the news, and uh, obviously, since then, he's done a lot of media appearances. He has a book released, and he opened up a local coffee shop, and he submitted his application to the Buy Black Contest, and the New Jersey Devils selected him to uh, have his company repped on the side of their helmet for a few games. So I felt as though that was very inspirational, and I just wanted to share that with you guys because, once again, Legrand went from being uh, paralyzed and playing the sport that he loved and now, obviously, through trial and tribulation, now he's a local uh, coffee shop owner, and he's going to have his company on the side of the New Jersey Devils' helmet, and that's going to be great advertisement. That's going to be great sponsorship. And uh, even if you don't really uh, agree with the whole Buy Black contest, I know a lot of people uh, are all for it. Some people are against it. You can't deny that this story was very inspirational and I think it's really cool because I'll be honest with you guys. I did submit one of my family members' company to be repped on the side of the New Jersey Devils' helmet, but obviously we weren't selected. But at the same time, Eric Legrand being selected for uh, this contest, I think it's well-deserved, and I'm glad that uh, it's going to happen like that. So uh, congratulations to Eric Legrand. And once again, if you just needed some inspiration, there's your inspiration right there. So even when all hope is lost, just know it might take a while but it, you can definitely rebuild and just uh, take your life into a different direction, even if it's something that you didn't really anticipate, even if it's something you didn't plan. Because once again, LeGrand was just a college football athlete playing the sport that he loved. And just moments later, it was taken from him and his life was altered drastically. But here he is now. So there's inspiration for you guys uh, this morning. Now, let's talk about a PTO signing once again for the New Jersey Devils. So, uh, the previous episode, I talked about Thomas Hickey and uh, him signing a PTO deal with the New Jersey Devils. Basically, I respect uh, Hickey's track history, but I just don't think there's room on the defensive side of things for someone of his service, just because it seems like the New Jersey Devils are stacked at the defensive position, especially since there's a lot of young prospects in the pipeline and next in line, especially you got players like Luke Hughes, who is bound to have a good year once he comes out of the University of Michigan. You got somebody like Simone Nemetz, who was selected second overall in the draft. You got players who have already had a couple stints in the NHL, so like Kevin Ball, you got uh, Riley Walsh, or uh, you got Nikita Ohotuk. So it would be really hard for someone like Thomas Hickey to make the roster because I just don't know which position he would take 
in terms of him making the team for a New Jersey Devil. So I think it's very unlikely that Thomas Hickey makes the roster. And I'm usually not – I don't really care too much about PTO signings. But, you know, I still talk about them like any other signing. So let's do it uh, this time around once again. So the New Jersey Devils signed Zach Seneshin to a PTO deal. Uh, he was the former 15th overall pick in the 2015 NHL draft selected by the Boston Bruins. Now, here's the thing about Seneshin. Uh, he is relatively young. So if I had to pick between Hickey and himself, I would select Seneshin just because of his age and just the matter of fact that we could hypothetically develop him. But Here's the thing about Seneshin. So, like I said, he was the former 15th overall pick in the uh, 2015 NHL draft. But the thing is, he's only had a few cups of coffee in the NHL. Like, the most games that he has appeared in at the NHL level is eight. And that came a couple seasons ago during the 2021 season. And he didn't really do anything. Like, zeros across the board in his eight game appearances. And when you look at his AHL numbers, there's nothing really impressive either. So, when looking at his most uh, recent a a AHL season playing for the Providence Bruins, he appeared in 51 games. He had 19 goals, 12 assists for a grand total of 31 points. So 31 points in 51 game appearances, and he's a right winger. So my thing is, is this, like, could it be a diamond in the rough? I am certainly not going to bank on it. So Seneshin, I just don't anticipate him making the roster, and it goes back to the same situation for Thomas Hickey, which which is like, where do you plug him in? So if he's a winger, like wh whose position would he hypothetically take? So the the only plausible outcome that I see Seneshin making the team is if he's assigned onto the fourth line and he's playing like at a winger position next to, hypothetically speaking, I'm just saying hypothetically speaking for the sake of argument, Michael McLeod. So, uh, but then you got Nathan Bashan, you also got Miles Wood, and then. Uh, on the third line, you got Andreas Johnson, Tomas Tatar, and Eric Halla. And we all know that three of those, all three of those players on the third line are going to make the team. And then the top six is just basically so far fetched that it's not even funny. So it's just like, where would you plug in Seneshin? But you could add him to Utica's roster. I don't know what the situation is for Utica. Once again, going back to my Thomas Hickey episode. But at the same time, you know, maybe Seneshin could develop and maybe he could get a little bit better. But uh, you know, the fact that he's only appeared in a few NHL games, doesn't have that much experience. And uh, in, in his um, few year totals at the NHL level, he's only appeared in 16 total games. He has one goal, two assists for a grand total of three points. And then look at his AHL numbers. It's just like, what stands out to me? Absolutely nothing. He's not a point per game player. He's not even hovering in that same ballpark. It just seems like he's out there. And there's a reason why. Uh, most of the games he plays at the professional level are just at the AHL and why he's, you know, pretty much a non-factor. So uh, in his first season uh, playing at the AHL for the uh, Providence Bruins, 66 games, 12 goals, 14 assists for a grand total of 26 points. Yeah, um, that's the definition of a bomb six player, but it's just like what potential does he have in order to, um, you know, maybe contribute to a young team like the New Jersey Devils? Uh not really seeing anything, but still, eh, I, I guess it's just whatever. So once again, Thomas Hickey and Zachary Seneshin uh, making the roster for New Jersey Devils. I personally don't see it, but if I had to choose one or the other, I would go with Seneshin just because he's young. Maybe you could still get something out of him. But for these PTO deals, it's just like, what, what am I seeing here? Like, is one of them going to surprise me? Even if they do surprise me, it's just like the New Jersey Devils have gotten to a point where it's just like we're, we're filling out our roster and we actually have some solid pieces, some pieces that we can legitimately use. So the, the only uh, forward that I see like just being a bit of a problem is Andreas Johnson. I think he's more of a trade pawn at this point, but there's no way you would sub in Seneshin for Andreas Johnson. That, that, that's not going to happen. Just no way. Then you also have to factor in that Miles Wood is going to be returning. So, there's another spot on the bomb six that's going to be taken by a pretty much an everyday player and someone that the New Jersey Devils desperately need because we need a spark plug. Then, you know, Michael McLeod, he's a center. Nathan Bastion, I love Bastion. And you kind of need him on the same line as Michael McLeod. So it's just like, I don't know. But th there's your PTO signing and uh, there's my overall thoughts on how it, how I feel like it's going to work out. So 
I'm not anticipating anything much, but hey, I didn't really anticipate much from last year's PTO signings. And Jimmy Vesey was able to surprise me during preseason. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens during puck drop. I just think it, it's just a bunch of fillers. But at the same time, they could contribute for the Utica Comets if um, if they get lucky. But um, I would much rather have Thomas Hickey in the Utica Comets organization just because he has the experience, he has the knowledge, former captain for Team Canada, someone who led the New York Islanders in plus minus. So I feel as though he can definitely contribute a lot more in terms of experience and guidance to our young players at, at Utica's level. I'll talk to Ben, uh, former guest on the show, Ben Burnell. Uh, he covers the Utica Comets exclusively. So I'll talk to him and see like what the situation is, if Thomas Hickey could potentially play for Utica. But there's uh, my overall thoughts on the PTO signings for New Jersey Devils. Now, before we continue with the rest of today's episode, I want to bring you guys the first and only library this morning. It comes from our friends at Bet Online. So, betonline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week's games. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting. Esports and scores, the fastest and easy way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Lockdown Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, so courtesy of my buddy Matt, he is a colleague of mine over at Fansided. We both write for Pucks and Pitchforks. I'm going to look at his article about five New Jersey Devils players to look out for during rookie camp, because as we all know, rookies have already reported to camp and it, the start of the NHL season is just right around the corner. So we're going to look at Matt's article and, and I'm going to provide you guys my two cent opinion as to which player might have the best chance of just showing out which player, you know, might just be there just to be there. But at the same time, uh, Matt wrote this article about five uh, standout players potentially for New Jersey Devils, and we're going to talk more about them. So the first one, and this is pretty much an obvious one, is Alexander Holtz. So he said, starting off this list, we have the Swedish sniper and winger Alexander Holtz. So Holtz is coming off a great rookie season with the Comets. His shooting abilities were on full display as he showed many flashes of his playmaking abilities. Despite this, he struggled in his nine games with New Jersey. Over the offseason, Holtz was working harder than ever back in Sweden, on his strength and edge work with fellow New Jersey Devils winger Jesper Bratt and his brother Philip Bratt, Holtz is very determined to prove himself to be an impactful player with New Jersey. He has a lot to prove during this upcoming camp in order to do so. It'll be very interesting to see if Holtz uh, training finally pays off and it shows if he plays in prospect challenge and training camps. Now, here's the thing about Alexander Holtz, and I sound like a broken record when I say this, but Every single moment matters for someone like Alexander Holtz. And what I mean by that is like every preseason game, there's no off night for Alexander Holtz. One off night could just send him right back down to the comments organization, and he's just going to have to start from there. So if he really wants to make the opening night roster for New Jersey Devils, he needs to show out during rookie camp. He needs to show out during preseason. He needs to show out during the prospects challenge, whatever the case might be, show out during practice. Every opportunity that Alexander ha- has in front of New Jersey Devils scouts or coaching staff, whatever the case might be, you need to show why you deserve the roster spot. Because uh, if I was a betting person, and like I said, did the ad read for betonline.net, I would put my money on Fabian Zetterlin to make the opening night roster just because Zetterlin was able to prove himself really well uh, in the few games that he was given at the NHL level uh, this past year. And obviously, he's a very big guy. And I, I think that if you have someone like Zetterlin on your team, you have a potential score and you have a potential enforcer. Like I said, I want him to become more aggressive. So that's where I, I stand with Fabian Zetterlin. But at the same time, I think a lot of people are forgetting that Alexander Holtz can really do wonders. And I want to see that. But at the same time, he needs to contribute at every opportunity he gets because every game, every play, every whatever the case might be, film room, uh, every team meeting, it's crucial for Alexander Holtz to stand out. Otherwise, he's just going to be going back to Utica to begin the season. 
Now, I have not lost faith in Alexander Holtz. I have literally not talked about him in any trade circumstances during my silly season episodes. It's just because I know what Alexander Holtz can bring, and I really hope that he proves me right. But at the same time, you know, he, he needs to know that he is now no longer the favorite prospect. You know, you got Fabian Zetterlin now. You got Luke Hughes. Simone de Metz was selected second overall, which is someone we're, we're about to talk about momentarily. So Alexander Holtz went from being the favorite prospect to now being second fiddle to Dawson Mercer and now to being like fifth fiddle, whatever the case might be, because he is behind a few other prospects because Alexander Holtz, no longer the favorite child. So Alex, so Holtz really needs to show out during any opportunity he gets. Now, second player that Matt wrote about was Simone de Metz. Now, my thing about Simone Nemetz, he was the second overall pick, and I think more people need to talk about his overall potential because the kid's an athlete. He can really play the game. And I'm excited to see what he can do once Luke Hughes finishes his sophomore year at the University of Michigan. So with Simone Nemetz, and Jersey Joe can definitely vouch for me on this, I think he ha- he definitely has a high ceiling. I defended the New Jersey Devils, selecting him uh, second overall. And according to Matt, He's an extremely gifted, offensive-minded, right-handed defenseman. So one of the things I talked about, and this might be somewhat controversial, I want to see the Mets get more goals in whatever uh, league he's going to play, whether that's the NHL or the AHL. I thought he was going to go back to Europe, quite honestly, and play another year there or two. I thought he was going to be a project. I was dead wrong. But I want to see him score more goals. I know he was able to do that during the course of the playoffs. And uh, I I know he has a a, a lot of upside. Digressing a little bit, back to what Matt said. He has extremely smooth skating, makes uh, very smart breakout passes, has incredible vision, and is underrated and underutilized shot. So I've seen the clips. I've seen the videos. Simone Metz, that boy's got power. And I think Jersey Joe, once again, can vouch for me on that. So, um, yeah, if he could just develop a shot, because – the thing is, is like he's going to be – if he was hypothetically paired alongside with Luke Hughes, Luke Hughes is obviously going to be the offense, and Simone de Metz is going to be the defense. Now, I want Luke Hughes to become better at defense, and I want Simone de Metz to become better at offense. And once you get both of them to just up their games in that sort of way, that's actually a pretty decent young defensive combination you've got. And once again, I'm a little confused as to why the New Jersey Devils don't have like a spot open on the defensive side of things. And – you know, giving it to someone like Brendan Smith, but uh, that's a dis- topic for another discussion. And I know you guys uh, are probably tired of me talking about that. But once again, digressing a little bit, um, Luke Hughes, Simone de Metz, looking forward to seeing those two play side by side once they get to the NHL level. I don't anticipate the Mets making the opening night roster for New Jersey Devils. I don't think there's any reason for him to. We wouldn't even be giving him a sizable ro- role to succeed, similar to. Alexander Holtz, but at the same time, you know, if he does perform well, you would have to consider it, but still very unlikely. Now, third person, and I think I picked Kevin Ball to um, make the opening night roster for New Jersey Devils. Um, Kevin Ball, similar to Simone Metz, kid's an athlete. He can definitely keep offensive possessions alive. He's a good shot suppressor, and according to Matt, another defenseman uh, on the list, and he is a huge left-handed defenseman. Ball is a shutdown left-handed D and has small flashes of offensive production. He had brief stints with New Jersey this past two seasons, getting him a taste of intensity of hockey at the NHL level. Even though Ball is huge, he has not uh, been using his frame to his greatest advantage. So it goes back to what I said about Fabian Zettel. Like, you're one of the biggest guys out there on the rink. So use it. Utilize it. Because I'm not just saying he's an athlete just to say he's an athlete. He's a big guy. He's a good shot suppressor. I saw I saw glimpses of potential good from Kevin Ball. Like, if, if you need uh, more proof, just go back and watch the Vegas Golden Knights game towards the end of the year, which was one of my favorite games to watch all season. So Kevin Ball definitely has the potential. Now it's just a matter of maybe he lacks the confidence. I don't know. Maybe the development is just not quite there. But I'm expecting better from Kevin Ball this upcoming year. And I think that – uh, he definitely has some upside. I don't – obviously, similar to Alexander Holtz, he's not the favorite prospect, but uh, in 17 games last year, he uh, had one goal, three assists for a grand total of four points. But, you know, scoring is not really his uh, thing. So I want him to use his big body to his advantage, move guys off the puck, 
continue to do what you're doing, be a shot suppressor, be like Jonas Siegenthaler. Like, model your game after Jonas Siegenthaler. That's all I got to say for Kevin Ball. Like, look at the film, go back on it. That's what you got to do. Like, you don't need an offensive game. You just need to uh, be in the right play, uh, right spot, and just keep uh, offensive possessions alive for your team and don't slow down the offensive tempo. So that's my advice towards Kevin Ball this upcoming year. Now, the fourth one on the list for the New Jersey Devils is Graham Clark. So um, that's a name I haven't talked about in a while. Speedy winger with a snipe of a shot, unfortunately for Clark. His skills have no come together like he wanted. His production this previous season did not improve from his first season with the Binghamton Devils. Uh, he is another prospect that is a lot to prove this upcoming training camp and is determined to make strides to become a much better player. Um, like I said, Clark is a player that I haven't really talked about in a while. Like We talked about his brother, Brant Clark, when he was drafted um, just a season ago. But for Graham Clark... I don't I don't know. Yeah, he would have a lot to prove, but I don't even think he's on Lindy Ruff's radar. So, yeah, he has a lot of potential, but he has a lot of work to do if he actually wants to get to the uh, NHL level. And now the final prospect is someone I've actually uh, talked about on the show before a good while back, Brian Hallinan. So Hallinan is a newbie to the Devils organization and one of the older prospects in the system. He signed a contract with the team after a very impressive senior year at Michigan Tech. He reported to Utica and played with, uh, the, with the Comets for the remainder of the season. Even though he was not the uh, most productive player on the rink, he was transitioning to a more competitive level. So for Hallinan, it's just like, I don't, I don't know. The same thing with Clark, just nothing impressive. I think I said it when uh, the New Jersey Devils announced that they had signed him. I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, impressive from Michigan Tech. Had pretty decent numbers, but it's just like, uh, it's just what whatever. I'm not expecting anything from Ryan Hallinan, and we'll see what happens. But I, I just don't think, similar to Clark, he's in a position to. This is one of the the cons of having so many prospects. Like you do have good prospects. I'm not trying to crap on the kid, but at the same time, it's just like you know he's one of the older prospects that the New Jersey Devils have. He's 23. And it's just like, um, is there room for him? So for Michigan Tech, he appeared in 37 games. He had 21 goals, 23 assists for a grand total of 44 points. No one's really talking about it. And he's a winger. So, But at the same time, it's just like the Devils have a lot of wingers who can score and are putting up better numbers in, in you know those kind of game opportunities. So it's just like Hallinan is just the odd man out in that sort of uh, instance. But but a uh, special thanks to my buddy, Matt uh, Junio, who uh, is a colleague of mine over at Pucks and Pitchforks for sending me his article. And I said, you know what? I could use that in an episode. And basically, those are my opinions for the five uh, rookies for New Jersey Devils who can try to impress during camp. And I think the, the, mo- the most uh, pressure on any rookie's shoulders is right now on Alexander Holtz just because of what's at stake and and i'm sure he doesn't want to get lost in the in the sea of prospect pool so let me know what you guys think is there a prospect that comes to mind that the new jersey devil should have their eye on who do you think might make the opening night roster who do you think might surprise am i underestimating clark and hallin in a little bit am i overestimating holtz here's your guys thoughts so hit me up on twitter at trey matt four or the show's twitter page at locked on devils and as for today's episode that's all time i have for you so continue to stay safe have a wonderful day new jersey go devils I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.